do a card and I'm going to do the beginner card but then I'll show you how I made it for an avid stamper and then how for a casual stamper also and then I also have a bunch of cards at the end to share with you that I've used creating this set now this set is fabulous and I think it's probably going to be backwards but there's not much I can do about it this way hi Tina um, but this set is retiring at the end of the month so it's a great set to have I love the thank you in there <laughs> oh okay good good point Tina yep sometimes we are all three and I find myself that way also um, this image is so much fun and there is a coordinating punch now the punch is stain but not the stamp set so there will not be uh, I don't think the Daisy Lane I don't have it here to know I don't think the Daisy Lane has a large image in there but I could be wrong but this set is going away and I just love these little tiny this little tiny daisy at the top and that is actually the one that we're going to use today to make our card so let's turn this around so that we can do a little bit more chatting and I can share some things with you but I didn't know if it had the large a large daisy in there the well I got my catalog right here let me see but um let's see 23 of course now my pages are all sticking together yes it does have a big image in there so it has both so this punch is good for this one so if you don't want to get the one that's retiring because Daisy Lane is um, carrying over and it is actually a bundle with the medium punch in it which is smaller than this so that's something to think about but if you like this one you want to get it before it retires it is actually on page 96 of the catalog and it's got some great images this one is fun to play with and these little I don't know what you'd call them things here flowers go with that this one has this but I have interchanged them I've used this one with this so it doesn't matter this is actually the center for the large daisy so you can have a solid center or that this actually colors that daisy and I'm going to use both of those today this one is fun it's a strip of three and it's fun for a border this um, leaf is great to use with this there is no punch for it but it's a fairly easy fussy cut and this one colors that one in <coughs> excuse me gotta get my drink so I mean there's some great images in here and you can do a lot with it so that's something to think about and it's not a bad price point seventeen dollars um, the punch is uh, 187 the punch I think is a little bit more I should have marked these something to remember for next time um, the punch is 18 so you know for about $35 you can get a stamp set and a punch and it's perfect I would say so Barb you are definitely an avid stamper so that's something to think about and while we're talking about catalogs look at the new one and I've had mine spiral bound I have a cover on the front and a heavy-duty cover on the front back now I can show you the front and I can show you the back but I can't show you inside but you kind of get a sneak peek of some things that are in the catalog uh, there's a cute little stamp and some leaves so another fun stamp there so you definitely want to have a new catalog because they are fun and they're loaded with ideas 
All right, I'm not using the punch today, so I'm not worried about that. And I've pulled my stamps. I am actually using this one, this one, this one, and I use this sentiment on the other cards, but I think I'm gonna use the thank you, and you'll see why. So, I have a scrap paper because I'm gonna do some off stamping. I am using our note cards. Now, our note cards are really an economical way if you're just starting out for um, getting started. Let me see. I think they're on this page. Yep. On page 168, the note cards, they come in vanilla and white. And you get 20 cards and envelopes for seven bucks. So that's really good if you're just starting out and you want to get um, some supplies. The envelope is five and an eighth by three and five eighths. So you can mail these. Some of our kits have smaller ones like this one. Nope, that one you can mail too, the scallop note cards. So if you wanted some scalloped ones, you could get colored ones. Some of them you cannot mail. Your envelope has to be three and a half by five, or you cannot mail it. If it is that size, you can mail it with a single stamp. So great way to get started. All right, I am going to take the note cards are already scored for you. So I'm going to fold it and I'm gonna use my burn, phone folder to get a crisp fold. All right, and that makes it lay flat. Although in this case, because it's so, they're a thicker cardstock than our regular um, cardstock. So, and then there's the envelope. Now, this is a simple card because a beginner stamper doesn't usually have many supplies. Um, and a lot of times, you know, they don't, you can't get a whole lot to begin with. So I'm going to take my leaf and I inked it up, or my stem I should say, and I've stamped it right on to the cardstock. Now I'm letting it sit there for a few minutes because if you're a beginning stamper, you wanna let it sit for the ink to transfer. And sometimes when it's a long stem down and the sides, I will just kinda rock it gently, very gently. You wanna practice this on paper because if you see there's ink in those other space, spots that could get on your card. But you wanna give it a few seconds for that ink to transfer. And I'm not going to put that away because I'm going to show you something else. Now, that was the old style pad. These are the new style pads. These open like a compact. I don't have the strength in my finger to what they say is you're supposed to just grab it and pull it. And some of them are hard. So what I do is I just press on the back and it pops open. And it makes it a lot easier to me. I end up with ink all over me if I don't. So with that, I'm going to take the outline of the stamp and I am going to ink it up. I'm going to test it on the scrap paper and make sure it's inked up well. And then I'm going to set this down here right on top. And again, I'm letting it sit. And it's because it's a photopolymer, you can see through it. You can easily line up the stem and the flower head. There we go. Now, I want to fill in my flower. If you're a beginning stamper, you would not necessarily have markers and things like that to do that. This set gives you the perfect image to fill it in. The problem is this ink is very dark. So I'm going to test it and see. See, if I do a third generation, that's first, second, third generation, of stamping on scrap paper, then I can bring it over to my image and it's easy to line up, stamp it, and I apparently have something on my um, stamp. 
Let me try it again. It'll be a little darker in one spot. There it goes. And see how you get a lighter image and you can then see the darker image from the inside. So that's something to think about also. Now, the other cards that I used, I use the sentiment, your thoughtfulness brighten my day. You can use it there or, and I didn't know which one I was gonna go, the thank you is a lot bigger. So then that takes up more of the card and you're thinking, well, it looks kind of plain. So I'm gonna use the thank you. Let me make sure I've got some ink on it, yep. Always check it on scrap paper to see. All right, and I'm gonna stamp thank you. And I'm gonna try to get it straight, but you know what, if you don't, that's okay because you're, it's a handmade card. It's not Hallmark. So there's our thank you. Now that's, you could easily send the card that way. If you're so inclined, you can add a bow. And this is our crinkled seam binding, which is fun to play with. And mine has some static in it and you can take your seam binding and the seam binding is in the occasions catalog but it is carrying over to the new one and you can tie a tiny tiny bow because you don't want anything too big it'll overpower the image so what I do is I kind of hold it and add a little bow right there all right, now there was no glue involved in this, but you can easily get some glue dots and add your bow. All right, so I'm gonna do that. And it's, it's not something you have to do, but if you wanna take it to the next level, even though you're a beginner, by buying the white, you can dye the ribbon and have it for any color you want. So there's a cute, simple, quick thank you card. You can use any sentiment up there. If you have other stamp sets that have others, this can be a hello, this can be a thinking of you, anything. But to make your card more so that people are really impressed and they think you're a really, really good stamper, even if you're a beginner, you wanna take and you want to decorate your envelope and the inside of your card. So I'm gonna take the same image, and I'm using my paper because it's gonna go off, and I'm stamping the stem inside and it just takes your stamping um, to, a, to a little bit higher level, even though you're a beginner. So there's lots of things you can do, I'm sure it's inked up, that even though you're a beginner, it doesn't look like it. And not many people think about decorating the inside of the card in the envelope. But my philosophy is, is, Everybody loves cards, and everybody loves a handmade card. And who wouldn't love, I've got that one spot, must be, I must be rocking it, not putting it down straight. Yep, that's what it is. Um, that's a good way to tell, too, if you're putting it down. See, there I go, I missed it again. There. Yeah, there must be a little dip in it, probably because I've used that stamp so much. But there you go. And now, not only does your recipient have a great card to look at on the front, it's carried over into the inside. And the mailman or mail person has something cute to look at also because you've decorated your envelope. If you don't want to decorate the front because there's not a lot of space on it, decorate the back. You can pull it straight across. Let's see. You can pull it straight across the flap and decorate it that way. 
So there's your beginner card. But now you're probably saying to me, but Robbie, eh, that's okay. It's cute, but I want more. So you can take and step it up. This would be for someone who is a casual stamper. They have some supplies, but not a lot. I have used the fancy label punch for my sentiment down here. I have stamped the image using the same old olive, but the paper I've used has flirty flamingo, so I did a flirty flamingo top to it, and I totally forgot my rhinestone on that one. I'll have to go back and add it. Can't do that. Gotta have some bling. I like my bling. I even had them pulled. So just stick a little rhinestone right there. All right. The paper that I used is also retiring. It's the perennial essence paper, and I've used this a lot. This is gorgeous paper. My favorite paper in here was this one because it's got little tiny daisies in there. You barely can see it, but it's got all our D designer series paper is double-sided. This one you could easily use also because there's a daisy in there, so you could use a strip of that. And as you can see, I've used a lot of it. I don't know if there's any piece that I haven't used, but this is gorgeous paper. Let me see if there's any in here. I still have a few full sheets, but not many. But let's see. Um, I can pull these out so you can see it a little bit better. But look at that. That's Blackberry Bliss. That's a gorgeous piece of paper. There's the back side. Here's another one. It's got a lot of detail to it. The green is the background. This one uses Flirty Flamingo on it. So you could pair it with that. There's that piece that I love and you can see those daisies. I just love those daisies. But then I'm a daisy girl. And then this piece and this piece are the same. But then that piece and the other one. So I have used some of these pieces a lot. There aren't many of some of the others. So the Avid Stamper would Use a piece for the whole background, not an average, casual, sorry. Take another piece of Whisper White, cut it down so you can still see some of that, those daisies. I wanted those daisies to peek out. And this one, I thought the blue showed up, so I used the punch. I stamped my sentiment, and then I used the punch to punch it out. And I added rhinestones. This time I did two daisies, and then I added a strip of the DSP on the inside because I had a strip left over when I cut it down. And then there's the envelope. So there's your casual stamper. Now the avid stamper is gonna say, okay, not bad. Okay, oh, I did use the ribbon also. Not bad, but I want more. So your Avid Stamper would take the subtle embossing folder and emboss the front of your cardstock. Then she would take, because she has these things already, the stitch nested labels dies, and she would create a layer for the image and a background layer. And she would do the same thing with her sentiment and all I did was I cut I stamped this cut it out of white and then I cut another one out of the blackberry bliss because the blackberry bliss to me over here showed up so then I just cut along the edge to cut it down so it fit and I've used the ribbon not as a bow on this but as a, a uh, an element on top of the DSP so it gives it a little bit of sparkle and I sprinkled on more rhinestones in clusters. So there's your beginner, your casual, and your avid stamper idea using one set. 
and minimal supplies, a few supplies, lots of supplies. Now I know you're saying, all right, that's fine and dandy, but I don't like the note cards. So I went through my stash and I found some more cards that go with this set. And I found this one. I'm going to move this just because it'll be easier to see. I found that one that I have done. And on this one, I used the large image. And what I did was I did some faux watercoloring. So that's a technique on here that I've had on my blog. I use this faceted gems. There's the leaf that I did with faux watercoloring again. And I combined it with some other designer series paper I had. I did use the thank you again, so there's one idea. This one uses that same spray, or that same stamp, I created a spray. These are full size cards, so these are four and a fourth by five and a half. The others are smaller. So I used the blueberry bushel, which is an, um, color that's retiring. I created my spray and added the same sentiment, added my rhinestones and a little bow. I should say that's a nosegay. Here's another idea. This one, I did the stamping and I stamped it three times. Now the bottom one uses the other stamp from Daisy, Daisy Lane, not Daisy Delight. I took a piece, a panel, and I used one of our dies and cut the top, and then I used the images from Daisy Lane, stamped my sentiment, put my image together, and created that one. This I fussy cut, there's no die for it. All right, here's one, and I stamped onto Blackberry Bliss, and I used my Whisper White ink pad. It's just stamped on there. It's not heat embossed or anything. Or in, it's not, yeah, it's not embossed. I stamped it and then I hit it with my heat tool to dry the ink. So you get a nice, um, a nice subtle look to it. And again, it's not a lot of supplies. And I sprinkled on some sequins, used a faceted gem. This one uses the silver metallic edge ribbon, which is also carrying over. So there's that one. Here's another one using that large daisy punch with that faux watercolor technique. I used some oval dies. I embossed the background of this one with the leaf embossing folder. And I chose, this is Coastal Cabana and Blushing Bride. I like pinks and pinks with blues, you know, like a blue green and greens. Here we go, one with that same image. This one, I used a die for this. This is some daisy paper we had last year that I loved. I used a die cut for the background. These are just circle punches. And this time I colored the little gems. These are clear, I think. I don't think they're the gold ones. They may be the gold ones, but if not, you can color your gems and your rhinestones with alcohol markers, and that's what I did. Um, I don't know if I used, I probably used the daffodil um, blend to color them. I stamped a little hello and I followed the circle theme through there. And the last one that I have, I again use some of that retired paper. I don't know what that's from. It's I have a lot of sentiment stamps. I noticed this morning when I pulled this one out, my gem has slipped. That happens when you had it for a while. So I punched out the plain punch using the large daisy punch. And then I used, um, it's a scallop circle. I think it's the one and three, no, one and one eighth inch scallop circle. And then I took my snips and every, in between the scallops, I cut so that it kind of gives it some texture and you can 
pop it up a little bit so that it looks like that. Those were some bees from another set. I used a die in the background. So lots of ways to use this set. It's a very versatile set, perfect for um, high joists, friends, and things like that. So let me get my three cards back. And here is my beginner card. Here is my casual card. And here is my avid card. So you can see how it was stepped up each time. These cards here are on my blog. You can easily go to creationsinpaper.com. Over on the side in the upper right corner is a search bar. You can easily type in there Daisy Delight because that's the name of the set. And those cards will pop up because they have been shared on my blog. So if you buy this set, and I linked in the description with all the supplies, the numbers, and my shop um, address. So you can go in there and you can order these things and create your own cards. And I've divided it up into supplies, into beginner, casual, and avid. So if you want to do the uh, uh, casual card, you would order everything for the beginner plus those things here. If you want the Avid, you'd order it all. Now, I did not include the ribbon on the beginner card. You can easily add that in because the ribbon is under there and the number is there. If you have any trouble ordering or you need my help, just let me know. So ladies, what do you think? Do you like the idea of a beginner card? Step it up to the casual. Step it up to the avid.